Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Bill Daly. Um, and tonight I actually wanted to tell you all about uh, my testimony and my encounter with uh, the Holy Spirit and the Lord. <clears throat> so to start off, basically, uh, it was September 18th of 2015 uh, when what happened to me happened to me. Um, you know, words really can't fully describe it, uh, but I am going to try the best I can to give you as much detail as I can about it, uh, because I have to be honest, it, it, it changed my life. Uh, the Lord came back to me after years uh, and years of actually uh, being backslidden from the Lord. Uh, I got to a point in my life where I really just, you know, I thought there's no way that the Lord's ever going to come back to me. Uh, there's no way the Lord can forgive me, uh, or would forgive me. And uh, I just want to start by telling everybody out there, uh, first and foremost, the most important thing about that is, uh, you know, don't ever give up on the Lord. You know, the Lord doesn't give up on you. Uh, if anything, we give up on Him. And, you know, that's something we can struggle with for the rest of our lives. You know, uh, I tell people all the time, so you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, you don't have to believe me, but you know, I've always been a big believer in the truth and telling people uh, about that and everything that I've done. And uh, <clears throat> this has absolutely been the realest thing that's ever happened to me in my life. And I just wanted to share that with you today. Um, <clears throat> so to start, basically uh, back, here, uh, back before September uh, of last year, September 18th, uh, for about a month or two prior, uh, a good friend of mine uh, out in Las Vegas where I used to live, uh, named Jason. Uh, you know, he he's really he really got to the point where he was just basically uh, talking to me throughout my days, um, and really was pouring into me. You know, really just trying to encourage me that you know God is real. Um, even after, you know, my years of being backslidden, uh, just cursing the Lord and just saying, you know, everything horrible under the sun you could say about him. Uh, got to the point where I just feel like he had forsaken me and there's no way ever that, you know, I could be forgiven, uh, and that he would never forgive me. And at this point, you know, uh, Brother Jason has his own experience that, I'm sure he'll show online uh, sometime uh, with those in his own time. But basically, you know, the Lord came to him about four years prior, uh, really touched him, and uh, filled him with the Holy Spirit. And he's been awesome ever since, and I love him. Uh, but, you know, he'd really been pouring me at this point because uh, about four years prior, actually, as well, uh, my father passed away. And when he passed away, uh, it was rough. I actually, you know, took him to the hospital, uh, I saw him literally going into cardiac arrest and shock, and uh, it really hit me hard, uh, real hard. I got depressed, I got to the point where I was drinking basically uh, every day, uh, like a fifth of tequila, or at least half a fifth, uh, chasing it down with uh, you know a bottle of pre-margarita mix with the triple second tequila already done up, so I was drinking like a fish. Like new gills on the side of my neck, for lack of a better word. I was really depressed. Um, miserably depressed. And just got to the point where I felt like, you know, there's, there's nothing else more in this world that I want, that I need, that I could learn. Uh, and that was it. There was really nothing left for me. Uh, you know, I lost my mother when I was 12 to cancer. Um, uh, just been through all sorts of trauma. And I'm not just going to sit here and out of whole list of laundry because we could go on and on about that conversation uh, but basically the point is Jason uh, my brother in Vegas uh, he got to a point where he started pointing to me uh, and was really just trying to encourage me he says Bill I gotta be honest with you man he says the Lord is real uh, he's real than anything and anyone that you can ever you know believe and you know at this point I'm thinking in the back of my head yeah yeah right whatever uh huh uh, but it really, you know, I, I've been going through depression and it just finally came upon my heart where it was like, you know, I, I can't hold on to these things. I got, I got to let them go and I got to let go of my past. I really have to, you know, step forward, uh, in this world and, 
and I got I got to do something different because just drinking every day and being miserable definitely wasn't cutting it. But he kept pouring into me and pouring into me and, and letting me know, man. He says, you know, the Lord forgives. Uh, his grace is in abundance. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, man, I know you haven't been with the Lord for years. But, uh, you know, reach out to him, man, because he's real. He's there. And there's absolutely no denying that. <clears throat> so with that said, you know, I really got to the point where I was really, you know, pondering on it, thinking about it. Uh just thinking about how do I how do I come back to the Lord man I mean how do you how do you come back to somebody who you've turned away from who you've cursed all your life uh, and, and how do you reach out to him man and he just told me he says you know brother you just got to pray to him uh, and, and ask him to come into your life and uh, to be the most important thing that really ever uh, this has happened and he'll do that so, uh, prior to September 18th, uh, about two months prior, you know, I got to the point where I actually, uh, for the longest time, I used to smoke marijuana a lot. Uh, I mean a lot. And we'll just leave it at that, right? So, uh, I actually stopped at one point for about uh, a month and a half and uh, was doing pretty well, was clean, was sober finally. Um, and uh, really just started, you know, taking a lot of what you said to heart and, and, and getting to that point where I actually could have the courage and the strength to just pray uh, when I haven't prayed in years. Uh, so, uh, about, about two and a half weeks prior uh, to the 18th, I... Uh, I finally got to that point where I said, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm, I'm really going to do this. Uh, I'm really just going to reach out because there's truly nothing left for me in this world. And uh, I'm going to really give it my all. I'm really going to genuinely and wholeheartedly uh, pray to the Lord. And uh, you know, pray that it will come back to me. Uh, even though I, you know, forever and a day backslidden, uh, turned away from him, uh, professed anger and hate for him, for, you know, allowing all these things in my life, these traumas and tragedies, to just happen and continue to happen, um, but I was willing to give him a chance and see if he would come back and be a part of my life once again. <clears throat> so, uh, about a week and a half, uh, Prior to the 18th, I actually started to pray. Uh, I started to pray to the Lord, uh, pretty much just on a every Sunday basis, uh, till about a week and a half prior to the 18th. I got to the point where it wasn't just every Sunday, uh, for lack of a better word. It got to the point where I was praying every day, um, and I'd pray to the Lord, and what I'd tell Him uh, was, "Father, you know, I love you and I thank you." Um, I just, uh, all these, these problems in my life, this pain, this anger, this depression, this hate that I have built up in my heart, I just don't want it anymore, Lord. I just don't want it. Uh, it's not me. Uh, nobody can make it mine, and I don't want it. And Lord, I just pray to you, I just, I give that to you, Lord. I give that to you, and I want you to please take it from me, Lord. It's not mine. Nobody can make it mine. Uh, and I pray that you take that away from me and just come into my life, Father, and uh, be the only thing that really matters in this world anymore, Lord. I got got nothing left in this world, and uh, and this all I got is this is this pain and suffering that I feel inside, and I don't want that anymore. I don't. So I pray that you come and take that from me and, and and come back into my life again. And if you do, I'll serve you forever. Um, you know, I repent from these things. And so <clears throat> I've done this literally uh, for a little bit of time where it was every Sunday. 
uh, prior to really a solid week and a half of prayer. Where I finally got to a week and a half prior to the uh, 18th, uh, really just praying uh, every day. And it got to the point where I was getting, not only from every Sunday, uh, but to every day. Uh, and then throughout this week and a half of praying, it got to the point where it was every hour. I really started pressing into it and just asking the Lord to forgive me and to please come back. And really just begging him, begging him with everything I got to really come back to me. And that, you know, I started to really get a yearning for him. Uh, and really reaching out to him on a daily uh, basis. Then it got to the point, like I said, where uh, it got to an hourly basis, actually, where every hour I was just crying out to the Lord and saying, Lord, I just don't I don't want this pain and suffering in my life anymore. I don't want this sadness, this misery, uh, this depression, this anger, this hate. Uh, I'm so done with all of it. I really am. And Lord, I just want you to come and and I give it to you, Lord, and I ask you to please take it from me and to come into my life once more and be the most important thing, the only thing that matters in my life. I pray that you'll do that, Lord. Please, 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 please. I can't tell you, man. It was hard because, you know, I was, you know, even every hour I was just, you know, breaking down into tears and just begging him, just begging him, Lord, please come into my life. And it was hard. Uh, it was really hard. Um... Just airing out all my, my pains, my misery, my sins. Uh, you know, things that I was just really struggling with in life and, and, and giving it all to them. Uh, to the point uh, where now it was increasing. I wasn't just doing it every hour. But literally every minute uh, of the day. Any time that something came to me where it was like... It was one of those feelings. I just... I turned away from it and said, ooh. I said, Lord, uh, that's not me. I don't want it. I don't want it at all. Please take that from me. <clears throat> and uh, so finally, September 18th rolls around the day. Um, <clears throat> and I'd, I've really been going through it as it is. You know, praying to the Lord and, and feeling like, oh man, what if he doesn't answer me? I'm really going to be in a world of hurt then. Uh, you know, I got weak. Uh, and again, I, I hadn't smoked for, uh, at this point, at least three weeks. About three weeks, I you know I stopped smoking entirely, and I sober minded. But I just got what was really hard uh, to pray into him um, and ask him to do that because I was you know everything was just coming to remembrance, uh, all the pain and suffering. Um, but I got weak this day, so I went over uh, to a, a friend of mine's house, an old friend now, uh, <clears throat> and uh, ended up buying a bag, you know. Uh, God, you know, I just, I've been going through so much, even lately, just praying to you, only in this week and a half, um, and I just needed something to just take my mind off of everything, and, you know, really, uh, decompress, for lack of a better word, so I went over to my buddy's house, I uh, ended up buying a bag, and <laughs> on my way home, as I'm driving, uh, you know, started smoking, I just bought a pipe over it, you know, the smoke shop around the corner. Uh, was anxious to just get back to smoking. So anyway, I'm on my way driving home. Uh, smoking up. Uh, you know, some really strong stuff. And, you know, it hit me. Uh, and as I'm driving down the block, I'm just like, oh, man. I'm so happy for this relief. But even then, uh, as I was smoking, uh thoughts would come to my mind, whether it be lustful thoughts, uh, angry thoughts, I mean literally it was just constantly, um, it was getting to the point where it was just all of a sudden thoughts out of the middle of nowhere were hitting me, and I just, I got upset about it and I said, ooh, no Lord, no Lord, I turn away from these, it's not me, these thoughts aren't mine, I don't want them, uh, and I just I'm praying to you now, even as I'm smoking. Uh, just come and take these from me, Lord. And uh, I don't want this. It's not me. And I, I give them to you, Lord. And I pray that you'll just come in my life and be the only thing that matters anymore in my life. And at that moment, as I'm driving home, I mean, I was just getting bombarded left and right with thoughts. Like, out of the middle of nowhere. I mean, 
You know, normally I smoke and I don't have any thoughts. I'm like, whatever. Uh, and nothing would come to my mind or remembrance. And all of a sudden, I was just getting hit really hard to where for about 10 minutes as I'm driving back towards the highway, uh, really getting hit and just every moment at this point, every moment, turning away from it and just saying, Lord, it's not me. I don't want it. And I pray that you take this from me and come into my life right now. Please, Lord. Please. Just really meaning it at this point. Really, really still tired of, of everything in this world. Uh, and even as I'm trying to blank my memory of everything, uh, just just turning away from it, and it, and, and really in that moment, it, I had realized that you know I wasn't just praying to him every day or every hour or every minute, but really every moment uh, that these angry and disgusting thoughts come to my mind, and 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 was really pressing forward into it every moment of my day that those thoughts would come up, uh, those feelings would come up, that anger, that, that bitterness, just turning away from it. So as I get on the highway, <clears throat> and, and literally as I'm hitting the on-ramp, I'm, I'm <laughs> repenting, rebuking Satan at this point. It's really got to the point where it's just making me angry, all these thoughts, uh, even as I was you know, praying to the Lord to come and take it from me uh, and let him know these aren't my thoughts and I don't want them. Uh, but at that moment, literally, uh, I'm getting on the highway, I'm starting to go, and all of a sudden, uh, the craziest thing happened to me. I couldn't put my finger on it, I couldn't put words to it, I was like, what the, what's going on? Oh my god, what's happening to me? This is, uh, oh my god, am I having a panic attack or something? Uh, literally, I had a history of panic attacks, and... And just figured, you know, this was just another one of those days where I was just getting hit all of a sudden with a panic attack as I'm driving on the highway. Uh, but it felt different. I couldn't, I couldn't put my finger on it. Thought, oh my God, am I having a heart attack or something? I, I don't know what's going on. I mean, literally, I got to the point where I was getting dizzy, um, and and really thought I was going to get into a car accident. I, I was scared at this point because it it seemed like something completely different was all of a sudden overcoming me in a way that never has really before. I'm like, oh my god, I got concerned, really. And finally, I, I got to the off-ramp as I'm struggling. I, I pull off over into a, a Walmart a parking lot uh, and uh, parked my car so this way I wouldn't get into an accident and, and whatever. And, and all of a sudden, just literally in that moment, I got hit with something that hadn't really felt before or at least in a long long time it was like an overwhelming feeling of joy uh, absolutely unrelated to my day uh, for, for some strange reason couldn't understand at the time but it's just like completely unrelated to my day completely wasn't self-induced I was feeling a physical sensation of joy not an emotional sensation, but literally a physical sensation of joy and love. Um, and just this, I mean, it was overwhelming and powerful. Literally, it, it started on the highway and I felt like I was having a panic attack at first. Like I said, I thought I was going to get into a car wreck. I was really scared. Pulled over and parked. And all of a sudden, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I'm just like... Oh my god. Oh my Oh my god. Oh my god. And it hit me. The Lord was touching me. The Holy Spirit was touching me. And I just said, "Oh my god. This is you, God, isn't it?" Oh my, oh my God. I was so touched that I got to the point where I was just saying, oh my God, for like five minutes straight. And just saying, oh my God, thank you, God. Oh, thank you, God. 
And literally, as I was saying, thank you, God, then it really hit me. Uh, this feeling that I was feeling hit me like a ton of bricks. Just pow. I mean, it, it was, it's just hard to describe unless you've ever felt it. Um, and it was joy. Overwhelming sense of joy that got stronger and stronger and stronger. Uh, in a way, words just can't define it. Um, and as I started thanking God, acknowledging that this was, this wasn't anything in life going on. This wasn't like my thoughts coming to mind or me uh, trying to trick myself. I was physically feeling something that I've never felt before as strong as I was feeling it now. Um, and as I was thanking God, literally, uh, it hit me like a ton of bricks uh, to the point where I actually was like paralyzed in my car. I couldn't move my muscles. <clears throat> I was completely just like, like I had absolutely no control of my muscles. Um, uh, just laying in my car like this, saying, oh my God, thank you, God, thank you, God. And as I was thanking him and my muscles got weak, where I couldn't control, I was like, oh, oh my God. Oh my God, what's going on? What's going on, Lord? Oh. Sliding down in my chair, because I didn't have control of my muscles at this point, and it, it, it was freaking me out, obviously, but uh, I got to the point where literally I had slid in my car uh, all the way down to the floor, and uh, as I remember as I'm sliding down the chair, I'm thinking like, oh my God, I really hope nobody comes over to my car and starts asking me any questions because I'm not going to have any answers for them whatsoever at this point. Uh, you know, I'm just really in the heat of the moment. And uh, and literally, as I'm sliding down in my chair and I'm almost, you know, getting to the floor of the car, uh, I mean, it just got stronger and stronger and stronger. All this, all these feelings that I was feeling, I literally was, was feeling two emotions at the same time. I mean... I was, I was laughing uncontrollably, uh, like I had never laughed before, uh, all at the same time, uh, tearing up as if I was crying while I was happy, and while I was laughing, it was, it was, it was the strangest thing, and, uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I felt, I felt, like, ashamed as well. But while I felt ashamed as well at the same time, uh, I felt like I was being forgiven. Literally. And in that moment, as I was feeling that particular set of emotions where I, I felt guilt, but I felt like, you know, I was just being forgiven like a friend would forgive you. Like, no, it's all right. It's okay. You know, don't worry about it. Uh, uh, as that particular moment really hit me all of a sudden I felt like a huge weight almost like a house I, I often describe it as a boat anchor but really it was like a house it was physically physically came off my chest right here and just went and kept on going it's like all the weight that I felt on my body was just literally coming off me and coming off me continually uh, I mean, it, 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 like I say, guys, it's hard to describe. I'm trying the best I can, so bear with me, right? But <clears throat> I literally uh, felt this huge weight physically coming off of my chest. And all at the same time that this was happening, I felt like I was getting a download. Uh, it's, it's, I can only describe that as a download. Where I was feeling as something was leaving me, something was coming in. Uh into my mind and into my body uh, uh, I couldn't even discern what it was I mean everything was going so fast at this point uh, it was just unbelievable uh, and clearly hard to describe but literally I mean I was at this point you know seeing glimmers of light in my eye uh, even as my eyes are closed um, and feeling really the all of this everything I've described so for all of this in in one moment, uh, it was just overwhelming and amazing. And I was literally, I, I didn't have any energy. I, 
and, and if and, and, and when I did find a little bit of energy, you know, I finally got to the point after about man, what, 20 minutes maybe, where I could finally sit back up in my chair. And even as I sat back in my chair, I literally slumped over the steering wheel. Uh, I couldn't control myself. I, I was and I was just feeling all of this just happening continuously, continuously for about 30 to, to 40 minutes, man. I mean, it, it was a long time uh, that I was feeling all this, and, and it was just, it was amazing. I, I, I was just living in the moment at that point, and and realizing what was going on, uh, even though I didn't know it. Uh, it was just all coming to me at once, and so. Uh, and so anyway, as I'm slumped over the steering wheel, uh, I'm leaning back, and pretty much just flopping like a fish back and forth between the wheel, trying to hold myself up so I didn't slip back down to the floorboards again. Uh, it was just amazing. I knew at that moment that this was God. But I got to be honest, I was, I was, it, it was, it scared me shortly after that because I, I didn't know what to make of it all. Uh, I know I didn't induce this on myself, uh, and what I was feeling wasn't just emotional, it was real, it was physical, in the physical, in the flesh, feeling everything that I was feeling, um, so overwhelming at this moment, you know, just, just so much going through my mind that I can't even put into words, um, but after about 35 minutes, 40 minutes, of this happening to me, just just over and over continuously, uh, all of a sudden doubt started to come to my mind, and thinking, oh my God, maybe I'm just you know having like a midlife crisis or something like that, really just you know losing my mind. <laughs> uh, uh, didn't know what to make of it. Really, it's like all of a sudden all this doubt and fear came in. Like, what just happened to me? You know, really, really uh, something else. Uh, so stupidly, <laughs> uh, oh, th that's right, one more thing I wanted to tell you about this, not only what all of this was happening, literally, is I pulled over into the Walmart, and all of a sudden, the Lord was just sitting me like a ton of bricks, uh, keep in mind how I was smoking earlier, and at this point, you know, as I'm going through the highway, I was zooted, you know, just really, really stoned, hadn't smoked for like two and a half weeks, three weeks, uh, so it really hit me like a ton of bricks too, but as soon as the Lord hit me, uh, as I'm driving on my way I, I, to where I got to the Walmart, literally right in the Walmart, I sobered up like that, just instantly. Uh, completely sobered up from the, from the weed. I was just, my mind was being blown, but literally all of a sudden as that happened, I was completely sober, uh, like I hadn't, hadn't even smoked at all. It, it was the craziest thing, right? So, so back to the end of you know, my episode 35, 40 minutes into it, <clears throat> as I'm just kind of feeling all of a sudden doubt and fear hitting me, uh, you know, got the idea like, man, what just happened to me? I, I really can't even put it into words. I don't I don't know what I'm going to tell people. Started smoking again. Picked up. So I smoked like five or six bowls, just back to back to back. I'm like, oh my God. My, I mean, my nerves were trembling. My body was jittering. Uh, you know, couldn't make heads or tails out of everything. So I picked back up. Started smoking again. Uh, I smoked like five or six bowls straight. And I wasn't at all getting high. At all. Whatsoever. And after the fifth or sixth bowl, I got to the point where I said, Well, that's completely useless. So I'm just going to throw that to the side now and, uh, uh, just accept and believe what's happened to me. I I literally was straight sober, uh, or that would have never been the case. Uh, had what happened to me happened, I mean that it just was awesome and amazing. So after like the fifth or sixth ball, I ended up just throwing it aside and saying, "Well, that was useless." Uh, went over back to my my friend Jason's house. And I remember just getting to his house, and he was out just getting groceries. Nobody was home. Uh, you know, everybody's, all the kids were out of school, and his wife was at work, and uh, he was out getting groceries. And, uh, you know, I got to his house, and I paced in front of his house back and forth for about, 
uh, five minutes, ten minutes, and just got to the point where I was like, all right, let me call him. I ended up calling him, man, and and, and just telling him, I said, brother, man, I, I, I got to be honest with you, something just happened to me that was so amazing, bro. I felt the presence of God. I just felt the presence of God in a way that was physical. It wasn't emotional. It wasn't something that I made up. And uh, I felt him. And I heard him. And it's the most amazing thing that's ever happened in my life. And I just remember him saying, Really? What? Really, bro? Man, that's awesome, brother. I love it, man. He says, hold on, man. I'm running out of fresh and easy right now, bro. I'll be there. I'm just right around the corner, man. I'll be home in, in just a couple minutes, brother. Uh, you know, and, and he got up, pulled in the driveway, and I was just bawling. Just crying my eyes out, man. I was just, I was so happy. Just happy the way I haven't felt happy before in my life. And, uh... You know, just started telling me everything that was happening to me, man, in the, in the Walmart parking lot and in the car and everything I was feeling and, and seeing. He tells me, he says, brother, he says, you've been touched by the Holy Spirit. That was the Holy Spirit hitting you, man. And, I'm, and, and at this point, you know, to be honest with you, for, for, uh, that's the first time in my life I actually heard the term Holy Spirit. Uh, I mean, you know, I'd gone to church when I was 12 for like five months. Uh, really became fervent. And that's a whole other backstory I'll get into, but... Never really understood what the Holy Spirit was. I'm like, what do you mean? He says, yeah, man, hold on a second. Uh, in fact, let me pull up the laptop, bro, and I'll show you some videos where other people who had felt the Holy Spirit and, and are, describing it, are describing everything that you're saying, bro. So he pulls up the laptop, pulls up some videos of uh, Holy Spirit encounters. And I'm just watching video after video after video. And almost everything that happened to me that I had felt physically, uh, every every video I came across, people were describing exactly just that. Exactly uh, the feelings they were feeling, that overwhelming sense of joy. Um, I mean, everything down to a T. It was just like deja vu all over again, really, as I'm sitting here just watching these videos. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. Um... And, and at that point, just really started to engage my brother Jason, man, uh, talking about the Lord every day. Uh, at this point in my life, I couldn't deny him anymore. I couldn't deny that he, you know, couldn't deny that he was real. He was absolutely real. He is real. Um, and he touched me after years of being backslidden and just cursing his name. <clears throat> I'm saying, why did you do all these things to me, Lord? You know, why did you get me? Why did you let me get molested as a kid when I was five? Why did you let my mother die of cancer when I was 12? And why did you take my father just four years ago? I tell you guys, uh, there's not a day that goes by that I don't regret. And that I don't tell the Lord how sorry I am. For everything I ever said to him. And thank him in the same sentence. Uh, the Lord has been absolutely the most amazing thing in my life. And that day still lives with me. And will live with me forever. It's literally now today. It has been one year. Uh, and one week. Uh, since the Lord has come into my life. And... Every day since then has been an adventure. It's been a journey. Uh, it's been exciting. Um, it hasn't been without its challenges. And it hasn't been without my weakness. It really hasn't. Um, but I can tell you that... Uh, talk about being reborn. And he's the most amazing thing ever in this world, man. And I thought there was no way he'd ever come back to me. And he did. Uh, so that's why I'm sharing really this testimony with everybody today, man. Because I don't know how anybody else in the world comes to know God. Um, or if they ever find that. Uh, but I can tell you that ever since I just willingly and wholeheartedly and genuinely uh, on my own time and accord. 
uh, just really went and said, Lord, I'm coming to you. All these pains, all this suffering, all this anger, this bitterness, this hate, these these disgusting thoughts, wanting to hurt people or lust or whatever. It's not me, Lord. It's not me. I don't want them. Nobody can make them mine. Nobody can make me take them. And Lord, I give that to you now, Lord. I give that to you. And I pray that you just you take it away, Lord. You know, I've heard that you know, uh, your yoke is light. And, and, and that you'll come and take that from me, Lord. And that you'll be the, the only thing that matters to me in my life, Lord. And if you do that, I'll serve you forever. And it got to the point where I wasn't saying this every day or every hour or every minute, but every moment. And as soon as I got to every moment, the Lord came and the Holy Spirit hit me. And I wouldn't trade that for the world. It's, it's been the most amazing thing that's ever happened to me in my life. I physically felt the presence of the Lord and uh, I think about it every day. There hasn't been a day I haven't been able, I have been able to get away from that thought. Ever since that day and everything that happened to me, man, it's just been uh, unforgettable. And I'm so grateful for the Lord. So I just wanted to share this testimony with everybody today, man, because <clears throat> you know I, I really don't know how everybody else comes to that moment, whether it's it's through the church. Or whether they have a Holy Spirit encounter like me. But uh just want to tell y'all the Lord is real. The Lord is amazing. Um, he'll heal you. He will, he will get you through the trials and tribulations of this world. And he's very, very real. That I can assure you. Because he came to me. And he made it clear and I can't deny him. I won't deny him. He's more real than anything you'll ever know or come to know in this world. And uh, the only thing I want in my life is for everybody to feel that. Is to feel the Lord touch him. To feel the Holy Spirit come into him. And uh, to set you free. <laughs> free as can be. And uh, that's all I really want, man. I mean, I, I know a lot of people tell you, oh, just pray on it, just pray on it, just pray on it. But I really mean that. Like, whatever you're doing in your lives, guys, just stop it right now, man. If you haven't done it before, you know, you ain't got to go pray in front of other people. Uh, you ain't got to go confess to other people what you got to do. And how it started for me was all I did was I went in my room. I didn't even pray out loud. It started at first in my mind. <clears throat> and then I got to the point where I was praying it out loud. Not every day, not every hour, or every minute, but every moment finally. And as soon as I got to every moment that those thoughts came to me and I turned from them and said, They're not mine, Lord. I don't want them. Nobody can make them mine. And I give them to you, Lord. I give them to you. And I pray that you take them from me. And that you come to my life and be the only thing that ever matters. I can tell you with absolute certainty that he'll come. He'll find you, and He'll floor you, and paralyze you, and make you reborn. So that's it, man. Uh, that's all I want for everybody, man. I, I encourage everybody, and I challenge you uh, to really take a look at your lives, man. Especially if you're in troubled waters and you're in the darkness. And just say, you know, have you had enough? Really, have you had enough of the suffering? And do you want something greater, greater than you've ever known? And just really, I, I encourage you all to, to really pray to him. Because I can promise you this. Uh, when you pray to the Lord, and you get to that point where you genuinely mean it, and you do it every moment, he's going to find you, and he's going to set you free. He's going to blow away. All the things you thought in this world that mattered. Where you find out and you never knew a thing. Until you knew the Lord. And he's so amazing.
and I love him. I thank him, man. Uh, he's the only thing that matters in my life anymore. Not my job. Not my car. Not my home. Nothing. And I wouldn't trade that for the world. And I love him so much, and he loves me too. And the minute you get to the point where you know, <clears throat> where you know, where you acknowledge, and you accept that too, and you call out to him every moment of the day until he comes and finds you and floors you and makes you reborn and saved. I just, I want that for you guys. I don't care who you are. I really do because that feeling is undeniable and you won't ever forget it ever in your life. So that's it. That's pretty much my testimony uh, of the Lord. Um, and I got some other stories I can certainly tell you about, but this is really all I wanted to focus on today was uh, my testimony of the Holy Spirit coming back into my life um, in a way that's undeniable and unshaking and, and life-changing. And I really encourage you all to, to seek the Lord, man. If you aren't seeking the Lord, really press into that uh, because no matter where you're at in your walk in life, uh, the Lord is real. And he is always, um, and he loves you. So that's it. I love everybody, man. I, I thank y'all. Uh, you know, share this video uh, with everybody you like. And, uh, you know, I just uh, don't stop believing. And never be scared to just let everybody know how real he is in your life. Because I want that for you too. I love you all. Uh, I pray for you all in the name of Jesus Christ, and uh, God bless you. Amen.